بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم The return, Raja Adopting the reported traditions of the Imams of Ahlul Bayt, we believe that, after the advent of Imam Al-Mahdi peace be upon him and his saint fathers, Almighty Allah will raise some people from the dead in the very forms that they had had before their death so as to honor a group of them and dishonor others, and to give ascendancy to the right group over the wrong and restore the rights of the oppressed ones from the oppressors. This return will be restricted to those who enjoy supreme ranks of faith, such as Salman al-Mohammadi and those who enjoy notorious degrees of corruption, such as Abu Bakr and Omar. After the return, they will die again and be resurrected on the Day of Judgment to receive the reward or punishment that they deserve because of their deeds. This is understood from Almighty Allah's information in the Holy Quran about the manners of those who would not take advantage of the first raising from the dead in this world before they will be again resurrected on the Day of Judgment. After they incur hatred from Almighty Allah, they will desire a third resurrection through which they will wish to perhaps act righteously and make amends. Reporting their desire, the Holy Quran says. They will say, Our Lord, Thou hast caused us to die two deaths, and Thou hast given us twice to live, now we confess our sins. Is there any way to go forth? 40 Eleventh's as the Holy Quran has actually proclaimed the return to this world, reported traditions of the Ahlal Bayt peace be upon them, have confirmatively given details of this belief and we have unanimously agreed upon its authenticity. However some people have interpreted the return as the restoration of political authority and power to the Ahlal Bayt, when the awaited Imam al-Mahdi, shall come. Yet, they have denied the return of certain personalities and the raising of others from the dead. As for Bakris and Omeris, they consider the belief in the return to be so heretical that to believe in it is hideous atheism. Similarly, Bakris and Omeris biographers have decided the belief in the return as one of the calumnious and defamatory features due to which a reporter believing in it is rejected and his reports are declined. Moreover, it seems that they have regarded the belief in the return as heterodox as disbelief in Almighty Allah or even more heretical. As a result, the belief in the return has been the most insulting and vituperative feature attributed to us. Undoubtedly, such sort of evil intended intensifications were used by hypocrites as expedient to vituperate each other and wage campaigns against others. Actually, such intensification is unjustified because the doctrine of the return taints neither the doctrine of monotheism nor prophethood. It rather confirms them since the return bespeaks Almighty Allah's absolute power to raise the dead and to resurrect, two extraordinary matters that can act as miracles for the Prophet of Allah, Muhammad, and for his household, peace be upon them all. This miracle is similar to Prophet Jesus' miracle of restoring the dead to life even though the miracle of the return is more profound, because it represents the resurrection of dead persons after their bodies have become dust. Says he, a pagan man who will give life to the bones when they are rotten. Says Allah. He will give life to them who brought them into existence at first, and he is cognizant of all creation. 36 78 and 79 Some people have disapproved of the doctrine of the return, claiming that it is part of metempsychosis, which is totally in the wrong. In fact, these people do not have the faculty to differentiate between metempsychosis and somatic resurrection, while the return is a sort of such somatic resurrection. Metempsychosis stands for the transmigration of the souls or, in plain words, the passage of the soul of a creature into a new body completely separated from the first creature's body unlike the somatic resurrection, which stands for the reformation of the same body along with its psychological features. The Raja holds the same definition. If the return is considered to be a sort of metempsychosis, then Prophet Jesus restoring the dead to life must have been a sort of metempsychosis too. And if the return is a sort of metempsychosis, then the somatic resurrection and the final assemblage on the judgment day must be such too. In the long run, the issue of the return can be discussed through the following two probabilities exclusively. First, the return is impossible to take place practically. Second, the traditions pertaining to the doctrine of the return are untrue.
Supposing that these two probabilities are true, the disbelief in the return must not be of such an extreme degree of enormity as depicted by our rivals. To tell the truth, the others adopt too many beliefs that are impossible to believe, or have not been proven by a single authentic tradition. Nevertheless, these beliefs have not taken them out of the circle of Muslims nor have they caused them to be charged of atheism. Too many are the examples of such baseless beliefs. Some Bakris and Omeris believe that the Holy Prophet peace be upon him, was liable to forget, to be inattentive, or even to disobey Almighty Allah. Others believe that the Holy Quran is as eternal as Almighty Allah. Others believe in Almighty Allah's conditional threat. Others believe that the Holy Prophet peace be upon him, did not nominate a successor. Nevertheless, the two aforementioned probabilities are false. As already cited, the return is a sort of somatic resurrection and the final assemblage after death, which is not impossible, and the only difference between the return and the resurrection is that the return will take place at a predefined time in this world, and all points of evidence proving the resurrection are applicable to the return. There is no reason for astonishment except that we have not come across such raising of the dead during our lifetime and we also ignore the reasons for or the obstacles against the happening of such return due to which we confess or deny it. As a general rule, it is not easy for man's imagination to admit something that man has not encountered before, exactly like those who find strange the resurrection on judgment day, so they, as the Holy Quran demonstrates, wonder. Who will revive these bones after they rot and become dust? 36 78 Say. He will revive them who brought them into existence at first, and he is cognizant of all creation. 36 79 In such a situation, where there is no intellectual evidence either to deny or to prove it, we must have recourse to religious texts, which stand as the resources of divine revelation. The Holy Quran, the most authentic and major source of divine revelation, has comprised texts proving the possibility of the return to the worldly life after death, such as the miracle of Prophet Jesus who restored the dead to life. In this respect, the Holy Quran reads, Jesus said, And I heal the blind and the leprous and bring the dead to life with Allah's permission. 3.49 The Holy Quran also reads, Uzair wondered when will Allah give it life after its death? So, Allah caused him to die for a hundred years then raised him to life. 2.259 As has been previously cited, the Holy Quran reads. They will say. Our Lord. Thou hast caused us to die two deaths, and thou hast given us twice to live, now we confess our sins. Is there any way to go forth? 40.11 this holy verse cannot hold any reasonable sense unless it is interpreted to denote the doctrine of the return to the worldly life after death, even though some exegetes of the Holy Quran have exerted overabundant efforts to drive it away from this doctrine, but all their efforts have been incompatible with the sense of the holy verse. As for the second aforesaid probability, it is unfounded because the issue of the return is one of the necessary subjects on which the holy imams peace be upon them have laid great stress through their uninterruptedly reported traditions. On balance, it is rather odd that a famous writer, namely Ahmed Amin, who claims holding considerable knowledge, says in his book of the dawn of Islam, Fajr al-Islam. Judaism can obviously be seen in the followers of Ahlal Bayt through the belief in the return, Raja. To answer this claim, Judaism can also be seen in the Holy Quran more obviously through the same doctrine of the return, which is mentioned on many occasions in the Holy Quran, as has been previously cited. Moreover, Judaism and Christianity must be seen in many of the doctrines and laws of Islam, because the Holy Prophet of Allah, Muhammad, has come confirming the bygone divine religions even though he has abrogated some of their laws. As a result, the emergence of Judaism and Christianity in some doctrines of Islam is not a fault of Islam, even if it be the doctrine of the return, as is claimed by Ahmed Amin. In any case, the doctrine of the return is not among the fundaments of the religion that must be investigated and believed, rather, we have believed in it corresponding to the authentic traditions reported from the holy imams of the Ahlal Bayt whom we believe to be in Iran. 
The belief in the return is finally one of the unseen matters that we have adopted because of the information received from our holy infallible Imams peace be upon them, and which is not impossible for Almighty Allah.